Hey YouTube, it's Jess with Roots and Refuge Farm. We have received such an incredible outpouring of support and love from you guys lately. Um, we have gotten such a huge influx in subscribers. And so I wanted to do something a little bit different today and take the opportunity to let you get to know the people behind this channel. Now you may have noticed you see a lot more of me than you see of Maya. Um, that is because a long time ago he and I decided to embrace each other's strengths and um, not push one another into our own personal mold. So I handle the media for the most part on this farm because I enjoy it significantly more than him. However, we are going to catch up with him later and see if we can get him to tell us just a few things about him. First, I'm going to tell you 20 random things about me, just things about my life um, that I think might give you a little more insight to the person that you're seeing in these videos. Tattoos. I'll start at an easy place because I get asked so much about it. Um, I did not have visible tattoos until I was 30. And after that, I actually had my entire sleeve outlined in one day and over the course of a couple of years worked on it um, about once a month. But the cool part about it is that my little brother is a very talented tattoo artist and he has done um, all of the tattoos that you see. He lives in Fayetteville, Arkansas and I will link uh, down to his Instagram in the, the description so you can check out his work if you uh, feel so inclined. I became a mom when I was 19 years old. Um, Jackson, my oldest son, turns 13 this year. And I have since had four more boys. Um, of course, I have a daughter by marriage. Jeremiah brought her into the equation. And five sons between the age of 12 and three. I've always had dreams to write books one day. I am a writer. Uh, I'm a published writer. I actually write for a magazine regularly and I have every month for four years now. It's called Do South Magazine. I will link their website down below and you can type my name, Jessica Sowards, in the uh, search bar and read articles until you can't possibly want to read them anymore because there are a lot of them on there. However, I am not published as far as books go and I want to be. That is a goal that I have for myself in the next year to really get serious about writing my first book, hopefully my first of many. You may have picked up on this one if you watched my video about growing tomatoes. I am kind of an obsessive researcher. I love to learn. I love to understand why things do what they do and how things work. Um, even stuff that's kind of over my head, I like to at least try to understand it. We did this thing um, a couple years ago. We got into this uh, personality test and it's called DISC, D-I-S-C. If you've got some extra time and you wanna check it out, it's really cool information and it really validated me because I learned that I am a very conscientious type, which means I just like to know the facts. I just like to have all the information. I like to have a plan and I like to be right. So I tend to not speak about something unless I've I've done my research on it. So yeah, it gets on a lot of people's nerves and especially for the kind of people who um, just like to uh, just like to fly by the seat of their pants. We tend to be like oil and water, but of course God has a sense of humor. So that's the kind of person that I am married to and that most of my closest friends are. I was actually a really sick kid. I was born with birth defects in my urinary tract and the long story short is that I spent the majority of my childhood on a really high level antibiotics. I was in and out of the hospital all the time with really severe infections that basically became immune to any sort of treatment. Uh, when I was 16, I was told by doctors that I would be on dialysis by the time I was 30. My body would never support a pregnancy and that my left kidney was was in such a state of disarray and so much scar tissue that it would probably not function very much longer. Fast forward a couple years later and um, I actually ended up in a church in a shopping center in the middle of nowhere Texas. I thought the people there were absolutely bonkers when I first got there but 
A woman stood up and said that she'd had a dream the night before that a young woman with an affliction inside her body in the region of her lower back was going to come in and get healed that day. Now, I did not know anything about healing and I did not really believe much of what they were saying. However, there was something inside of me that kept saying, that's you. I actually ended up being prayed for that day and from that point on, I no longer had the serious issues, but it wasn't for four years later until I actually went to the doctor and had a gamut of tests run, which proved that my urinary tract was completely normal without a single sign of scar tissue anywhere to be found. Which brings me to my next fact. Um, I am a believer. I know that's not a surprise to any of you. However, I am so outspoken about that, not because of any sort of religious obligation to be so. It's simply the fact that he has done such incredible things in my life that I love to share about it because then I believe that other people can grow in their faith to believe for those things as well. Um, I have, every day I get to live on this farm, which is my total dream come true. I have a healthy body that works in a way that it didn't used to. I have beautiful, healthy children that I was told that I would never have. That in itself is such a story of redemption for me that I love to share it. However, I do have a very strict personal conviction that I do not argue at all about the things of God. Unfortunately, anytime you stand up um, for something, you're going to be met with people who come against it. But for me, I've always found that there is way more power in the testimony of the goodness of God than there is in any argument. My cousin Amy and I have been best friends for our entire life. She was actually in the hospital whenever I was born. And um, since then, we have seriously just spent our lives together. Now, most of our lives, we actually lived in different cities, um, even different states at different times, but we've always talked on the phone every day. And it just so happens that the way it all panned out is she now lives three miles down the road. She has a small farm there too. Um, she is my person that I call any time that um, I need help with my goats because uh, she's kept goats over the last few years and we are raising our kids together we do so many different things together and it's actually one of my favorite things about my life I think it is really cool to have had a built-in best friend literally your entire life my favorite foods are tomatoes obviously um, a really like perfectly cooked, good cut of meat steak with like butter on it and hollandaise sauce on anything that can be considered an appropriate vehicle. Speaking of food, I love um, cooking, specifically at Thanksgiving. Um, Thanksgiving here is a little bit of a marathon feat in kitchen prowess where I like to cook absolutely everything from scratch. It takes like three days. Um, I think I do like 15 different recipes. It's a little bit absurd, but it's something that I've come to really enjoy doing. I learned to cook after my second son was born. He had a really severe dairy allergy and in nursing him um, we I had to I had to completely cut out dairy which led me to having to read a lot of labels which I had never really done before before that I had always been the kind of person who bought frozen dinners and stuff in boxes where you just open cans and add water but as I began to read labels I was had really had my eyes open to the reality of what goes on in um, the food industry so that is one of the big factors that actually led us to homesteading. That was the point that I really started gravitating toward real foods, um, eating organically, and sourcing foods locally whenever possible. Um, I love thrift shopping, and pretty much the majority of my clothes I buy used, and I absolutely prefer that. I would rather have something used and one of a kind that has a story and is significantly cheaper than go new, clo new clothes shopping any day. I'm not a big stuff person. Um, I don't like to collect things so much, like knickknacks and that sort of thing. However, if there are two things that I collect, it is handmade pottery and cast iron cookware. Oh, and seeds. My seed collection is absolutely obscene. So 
that is the pegboard where my cast iron generally hangs. It's getting a little bit of a makeover right now, which is why there's nothing hanging on it. We've just repainted it. But um, the reason why I am so into cast iron is because of Costello. Now, I have not talked publicly just a whole lot about Costello because when I've tried, it has been often met with great misunderstanding and um, assumption. Long story short, um, Costella was the nanny and the housekeeper that worked for my dad's family. Um, all through his childhood, she, you know, had a very, very heavy hand in raising him and his five siblings. Um, the first time that I watched the movie, The Help, I, uh, I cried like a baby because it was so personal to me because it felt like such a real depiction of what Costella and you know her peers must have walked through in the 60s as being the help in these um, houses for white families. Now by the time the 80s rolled around, I, uh, I had a very different experience of that whole situation. Um, I, Costello was just like a bonus grandmother to me. She continued to be employed by my family until uh, she retired, but whenever she, uh, whenever she died, uh, it was us that filled up the family section at her funeral. Um, she never had children of her own, but we were her babies. And um, Costella is largely the one who, uh, who taught me how to cook and uh, impressed upon me the great importance of cast iron. She was a really precious person in my life. She uh, really reflected the love of God to me. And um, I always loved her. And I, you know, I think that even though there is a lot to be said about um, racist mindsets that still exist in the South, I can tell you that I've absolutely never struggled with that because from a very young age I experienced what it was like to, um, to, to treat someone and love someone who was different than you just the same as you would uh, the people who were the same as you. Um, Costello was in our family pictures. Um, she was at our family holidays. She was our family. And um, yeah, she's why I love cast iron. My hair is totally permed. It's not naturally this curly. It is, however, naturally curly on the other side and straight on the top. And that meant that I was having to straighten it every day in order to not look like a cave woman. And ain't nobody got time for that. So I started perming it a couple of years ago and it is the best thing I have ever done. All I have to do is wash my hair and in the times like this summer where I'm having to take two showers a day or else actually smell like a cave woman, it makes for a lot easier days. In fact, I'm due for another perm, so don't be surprised whenever I am really curly again here pretty soon. Okay, so up until like two years ago, nobody had ever heard me sing, not even my husband. I mean, my kids had, like when they were infants, they couldn't give any sort of feedback. I was like cripplingly afraid of singing in front of people, but I really began to, um, be moved to the belief that God wants to hear everybody's song. And in believing that, I had to uh, walk it out, which meant singing in front of people. I started to learn to play the piano at the beginning of this year and then picked up the guitar. I am still very much an amateur, but I love to worship and I love to encourage other people to do so. Now, I do occasionally lead worship in like small church gatherings and that sort of thing alongside uh, Daniel, who you see in some of our videos, who is an incredibly uh, gifted worship leader. However, um, up until this point, I have never released anything like on the format of media because it still makes me really, 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 really nervous um, just to think about that. So, here's just a little bit for you. You've been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, He chases me down, fights till I'm found.
I've never been a dive off the deep end or rip off the band-aid kind of girl. Definitely always been the cautious, ease into it kind of type. In November of last year, I had the opportunity to go to India for a ministry trip. Um, it was my first time to ever go to anywhere, any place like that. It was really my first actual time to ever go out of the country. Um, it was such a major wake-up call to me and so incredibly humbling. It has done uh, wonders in my heart as far as gratitude is concerned. While we were there, we had the chance to minister to a woman and her two young children on the street. Um, we bought her little girl a toy and just prayed for her. We had a translator to encourage them that um, she was doing a good job and that she was loved. Um, she cried and she kept uh, shaking her head while she watched us loving on her baby and when we asked the translators why is she responding this way they explained that in India with the caste system that some people are considered untouchables and that she couldn't believe someone as well off as us was touching her little girl because we were kissing this little girl and hugging her and, and petting her hair even though she was really quite filthy and um, ever since then whenever I am in a place where I feel low or hopeless or I feel like the dreams that I have are never going to come to pass because of you know financial restraints and not having the resources to make it happen I remember that woman in India and I just think what would she think if she was put in my life exactly as it is right now how um, absolutely mind-blowingly grateful would she be to have exactly what I have right now I mean she probably doesn't even dare to dream to have what I have right now and it, it has been just such an incredible um, you know mindset change for me in just being grateful and thankful for everything and for every opportunity not just to live this incredible life but also to get to go and love on people um, that other people call untouchable and lastly I am an extreme introvert um, you might not assume that based on videos because I do enjoy communicating with people I do enjoy talking to people and um, I like putting myself out there and making a uh, making relationships and connections when it comes to stuff like media however it absolutely wears me out and over time um, I will hold myself up in my room I will get to a place of being overwhelmed where I just don't want to talk to anybody and all of the people who have grace for me and know me uh, well my closest friends know that even when we have family gatherings or get-togethers um, you might find me in my room about halfway through it because I just get really socially overdrawn um, it's one of those things that as I have learned to accept that about myself and um, not feel condemnation or shame because of it, it has made my life so much easier and so much more enjoyable to just accommodate what it is that I just mentally need in order to function socially. I know I promised you 20 things, but uh, apparently I didn't count them while I was videoing them and now I'm out of time. So uh, 18 is going to have to do and maybe we'll revisit the subject at a later date. Um, Jeremiah is going to share some things about himself in a separate video as well and we will also introduce you to our children in further depth. Um, thank you guys so much. I hope this gives you a, a deeper look into my heart and uh, allows you to feel like you um, have gotten to know me a little better. Um, thank you guys again. Until next time.